Yes, people, what's happening? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another live stream and a little bit of a Chelsea therapy session. What's going on? Where's the club going to go from here? Um, why are we seemingly doing our best to sabotage this season even more than we have done so already? Another dreadful, dreadful performance yesterday, dropping points to Sheffield United. That's four points dropped against the two shittest teams in the league in the last three games. Um, totally unacceptable. Another missed opportunity, and it means the euphoria of Thursday night has really been all, all for nothing. Essentially, you know, there's, if you can't back the, if you can't back up your performances, then you know you can't expect to move at the table, and you can't expect to go anywhere. Um, you know, I saw a stat today that Chelsea have only won back-to-back -back games in the Premier League twice this season. I heard that is ridiculous, absolutely ridiculous. One. Only won back-to-back -back games twice this season. I mean, I think we did it against Burnley and Fulham, and we've done it against someone else, maybe Luton and, and, and someone else. Back-to-back -back games, we've done it twice this season. Do you know how criminal that is? Absolutely outrageous. Absolutely outrageous. And do you know what? Like, It wasn't even like yesterday we were unlucky and we just switched off another lapse of concentration in the last minute. No, they Sheffield United thoroughly deserved that. They, out, they literally, they comprehensively outplayed us like uh, i mean it is it's ridiculous they comprehensively outplayed us you know we had 0.40 xg against bottom of the league we had six shots compared to their 11 they had six shots on target compared to our three they won more duels than us they had more attempts on goal than us um that's inexcusable at any level whatsoever. I know there's no easy games in the Premier League, but to go to bottom of the league and be played off the park against a team that's on course to ship 80 goals this season and is dead cert to go down and are the worst team in the league, for us to go there and do that is unforgivable. To be played off the park twice in the space of the last three games by the two worst teams in the league is unforgivable, absolutely unforgivable. I, I, I don't want to hear people say, oh, yeah, but, you know, we haven't got the tools to, to, to compete. That, that, might, that might be the case, but that's not an excuse for, for what we saw on the pitch yesterday, that that wasn't enough to go and win that game. We, would, wouldn't, have, we wouldn't have deserved to have won that game yesterday, but, you know, we were, what, a couple of minutes away from winning it and, and we couldn't hold on and we couldn't see it out. And and once again, we are left kicking ourselves for the fact that we have conceded goal after goal after goal. If you're having to score a minimum of two or three goals to, ha to even have a chance of getting a point, then you are not going to win many games of football. And that is exactly what we're doing. We're having to score two goals minimum to get a point. It, it, it's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. We can see over 50 goals this season. There's There's no... There's no defensive structure. The midfield is completely missing. The only thing that has improved is the attack. We're scoring more goals and we look better there. But then you could potentially argue, is that because we've upgraded and we've actually got better players there now than we did last season? Um, I don't want to discredit Pochettino entirely. I think he has made improvements to the attack. But I think there's also a big part of that to say that actually, do you know what? We have got considerably better players in the attacking third of the pitch than we did last season. Uh, th th that's also... Uh, a fair thing to say, but I, I just don't know where to start with all this. By the way, big up to everyone that's locked in. Make sure you're smashing that like button. Make sure you're subscribing to the channel if you are new around here as well. Um, it's all greatly appreciated. Run the likes up, subscribe. You know, let's get us to 50 likes as quickly as possible. First port of call. Apologies, I've not been live for a while, guys. I had a few things on. Um, but yeah, let's um let, let, let's let's dive into it, guys. Likes up. Um, and, and subscribe if you're new around here as well. Let's say hello to a few people and then we'll dive into this a bit more. Uh, Pochettino has to be sacked, poor game management and sit on the touch. Like, look, it, there, there's not really the defense. There's very hot, There's very few things you can defend the manager for right now, but he's not going anywhere until the summer minimum. So we might as well just park that until the end of the season. Um, I, I, I would, uh, on the evidence of, of, of things right now, I would absolutely agree that that seems to be the most likely scenario that we're heading to. Um, yeah, he's proven himself incapable this season uh, in in a lot of departments. There, there's no, there's absolutely no denying that. Uh, you cannot be drawing to bottom half team. You know, you absolutely can't. It's not even a bottom half team. It's the worst team in the league. Yes, big up, big up. Uh, have you ever in your life seen a softer, more pathetic bunch of defenders? Do you know what it is though? Like, 
we've got better defenders, I think. Though. The defence is the same as it were, was last season. We, we, we just don't have Koulibaly anymore and we've got the Sassi instead. Like, the centre-backs are the same. Uh, the full-backs are the same, bar Gusto. So the defensive unit is exactly the same ex, uh, in, ter- in, in personnel-wise, except we've swapped, we've replaced Koulibaly with, with, with Axel de Sassi and we've added Malo Gusto for right-back backup instead of, uh, instead of Aspilicueta. So... You know, the fact that we've suddenly got worse, like actually under Graham Potter, we had a good defensive structure. Yes, you know, we weren't great going forwards, but we had a sound defensive structure. And Pochettino, by all accounts, is a much more experienced and a, and a better coach, per se, than than Graham Potter. So, yeah, it's um, it, it's it's a really interesting one. Yes, big up, big up. What a mess we are. The fact that Pochettino... Uh, well, look, there's no, look, 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 what I would say is that like if they were going to have made a change, they should have made it ages ago. Plus the fact that optically, for the second season in a row, if you make a mid-season change, it, it, it really doesn't look good. And we saw what happened last year. You know, making a mid-season change doesn't make things better. So, you know, it, we'll just stick it out to the end of the season. There's not that many games left, and then we will absolutely reassess. Um, yeah, unfortunately we are, mate. Unfortunately we are. Um, yes, big up, big up. Uh, the, do you know what? The season still isn't done, which is the crazy thing. You know, we we do still have a chance of of reaching. The top six. I, I I don't believe we'll do it because I just, from what I've seen on the pitch, it, we, I, I just don't think we've got the capabilities of, of being able to do it. But the reality of the situation is we do still have the chance to do it somehow. Uh, if we are very lucky, we might finish eighth. I agree with that. Um, it, nothing's going to happen until the end of the season. Um, yeah, it, 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 it was poor from him yesterday. There, there, there's absolutely no denying that. You know, to be outplayed by bottom of the league. That is a coaching issue. Absolutely no doubt about it. That is 100% a coaching issue. No denying it. Uh, possibly, yeah. And this, this is the worst thing, you know. Like, and they, They've been battered 6-0 by Arsenal. They've been battered 5-0 by Brighton. They've been battered 8-0 by uh, Newcastle. Even, even Burnley beat these 5-0. And yet we've gone here and we've, and, we've, and we've let two goals in and we've actually been outplayed. It wasn't like we were unlucky and it was like a moment of madness at the end and what not, and we actually played reasonably well. We like if Sheffield United had won that game, you wouldn't be you wouldn't be coming away from it thinking, oh, we were unlucky there. They didn't really deserve it. They robbed us. They fully deserved everything they got. Um, yes, big up, big up. Uh, no, I don't have Discord. No, no matter where K was okay. You know, I thought it was a bit inconsistent, but you know, he took the goal well. It was an important moment, and yeah, it's just a shame that he uh, his efforts kind of went to waste. Uh, yeah, uh, I'm not, I, I didn't. I don't think it was right wing back. I mean, some people were saying it was a back throw. I, I don't think it was, but Gallagher was definitely occupying a lot of that space uh, down the left hand side. Um, I'm not really sure uh, what the plan was there. I, I, I really don't. Uh, let's see what else is. Um... No, it's a two year contract with an option of a third, and the plan was always to assess halfway through. So the end of the season would be halfway through. Um, what else? I'm not going to be able to read all these guys. I'll get through a few. Still, some interesting fans. Everything on players. Um, that is a combination. The players absolutely have to take some responsibility, but there's no way that these players aren't good enough to, you know, comfortably beat the likes of you know your Leicesters, your Leeds, and 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 all those. Do you know? Do you know what I mean? Um, it is. It is a big problem. It's a massive problem. But I mean. Yeah, it's, it's it's concerning to say the least. It absolutely is concerning to say the least. Um, but uh, look, if we if we look at the table now, and it's really frustrating because we if we could if, like if we could just of held on, which I know is a big if, but you know you look at the table here, and somehow we have still we're ninth from the table. Right, we've got a game in. We've got a game in hand on on Newcastle we'd go level on points with them but we'd be behind on goal difference um we've got two games in hand on West Ham and we're four points behind them we've got a game in hand on United and we're five points behind them so realistically do you know what's so mad right is that if we could just hold on in games and not just implode and bottle it like like we seemingly do every single week we should have four more points right now and we should be a point behind Man United with a game in hand do you know like if we just had a half decent defensive structure and and didn't have this ridiculous like weak mentality in the team we should be comfortably sixth by 
by you know by quite some distance. You know, we should comfortably be sixth in that Europa League slot, and you would probably say, yeah, that's roughly where this team is right now. And the fact you know that we've been so poor for large parts of this season that we're still only two or three results away from it being deemed an okay season is is is, is just kind of crazy. But <coughs> excuse me. Um, you look at it, and I just think what is a massive, massive problem is um, uh, what was I going to say? Is the fact you know is the is the mentality, um, the fact that we bottled four points in the last ten minutes against what your Burnley, Sheffield United in the last eight days. It's a new low for this club, and it's not like we have we're, we're not playing for anything. You know, I think Europa League now is 80-90% gone and conference league dare I say it conference league could be on the way to being gone as well and we should absolutely be ashamed from everyone from the very top to everyone to the very bottom it's embarrassing and I'm not sure really what the manager and the players are doing at the training ground but we seem to repeat the same mistakes every single week and we don't seem to be learning from it whatsoever i just think some a basic level of coaching sees out the last 10 minutes at the very least. The fact that we can't even see out 10 minutes is ridiculous. We made two defensive subs yesterday, right? And conceded within about, what, two minutes of them coming on, maybe even less when we chucked on Cassidy and uh, and what's his name? I've forgotten his name now. Was it Gilchrist? Yeah, or maybe it was Gilchrist we chucked on as well. I, I can't remember now. But we made two defensive changes and within two minutes, we conceded the equaliser. The Sassy playing McBurney on side. Um, it's honestly just ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. The mentality's in the bin. There's no accountability. There's no leadership. Um, and we're a club right now that is in 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 turmoil. Um, it's literally it is literally basic coaching, and Poch doesn't even seem to have the fundamentals right now. Um, you know, and it's the whole situation is beyond embarrassing at this point. It's it's that everyone just leave and just let and just leave the fans alone sort of feeling right now. Um, it 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 really is. But you know, having felt reasonably confident, you know, a few weeks back that oh, I was Baddy a shield that came on. The fact that we felt reasonably confident, or I certainly did, have felt a level of a degree of confidence that we would we would you know qualify for some form of European football maybe sort of two three weeks ago. I'm now starting to feel a little bit concerned that there's a chance that, you know what, we actually might miss out on Europe altogether again. And not just financially, but in terms of a squad, we cannot afford for that to happen. We have got too many players, too many players that need developing and need minutes to only be playing one game a week and and having the domestic cups. We, we cannot continue in, in this fashion. We cannot continue in this fashion. Do you know what? The biggest worry yesterday, and the fact also, right, we look at the games that we've got left. We have to go to Brighton. We've got to go to Arsenal. We've still got to play West Ham. We've still got to play Aston Villa. We've still got to play Spurs. We then go to Forest, who are fighting for their lives. We've got to play Bournemouth again. Um, you know, it, it's 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 problematic. It is absolutely problematic. And there is every chance that we could potentially still finish in the bottom half, given how inconsistent we have been this season it, it, it really is a worry but I mean in terms of going back to yesterday I think one of the biggest worries was the fact that our midfield just got absolutely taken apart outclassed I mean Nizar Kinsella saying it perfectly you know the most worrying for, for was watching Fernandez and Caicedo lose the midfield battle with Hamer, Arblaster and Osborne I mean no disrespect I've heard of Gustavo Hamer but Arblaster and Osborne never heard of these guys and, you know, that was 200 million pound players and Conor Gallagher. And we were outplayed technically, tactically and physically in midfield. These three players are better than the three that Sheffield United have got. So why on earth are we in a situation when we go to the bottom of the league and we cannot win a midfield battle? It's not just specific to this game. Uh, it's not just specific to this game. Uh, mate, mate. Yeah, mate, let me ring you. I'll, I'll let, mate, I'll ring you back a bit later. I'm just on YouTube. All right, then, mate. All right nice one, mate. Nice one. Okay. Hello, mate. Bye, bye. Um, 
Yeah, the, 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 look, Enzo, Caicedo and Gallagher are better players individually than Hamer, Arbaster and Osborne. But do you know what this comes down to, right? It's setup, coaching and tactics. That, those, that is why this three could not compete with this Sheffield United midfield. And by the way, this is a midfield, right, that you know, he's obviously not been able to do the business for Sheffield United this season. That That is the reason, you know, one of the reasons why they are where they are, because they, they just don't have the quality. And somehow we are finding ourselves in a position where, um, you know, we're being... This is not a one-off, by the way. This season, the midfield has cost us countless games. Far too easy to play through. Far too easy to play against. And... It wasn't just on one. It wasn't just on one part that we were outplayed in midfield. Uh, it's it's every depart, every single part of every single part of midfield. I mean, how are like technical players like Enzo Fernandez, Caicedo? You know, tactically, it's got to be on the coach as well to a degree. But these players have also got to think. Hang on a second. We need to grab this game by the scruff of the neck. Like we're clearly getting done out here. As 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 players, you shouldn't need to constantly. Look to the side, look to the sidelines for guidance from the manager. You should know on the pitch and think, hang on a second, this is going completely wrong for us right now. It is going completely and utterly wrong. We need to pull ourselves together and readjust the game here. The fact that we can't win midfield battles has been a massive problem. And I've been saying it for I've been saying it for a while this season. Enzo and Caicedo, for as good of players as they are individually, and Enzo Fernandez has had very some very good moments this season. We are in a problem where by that there's no midfield structure and these guys just look completely and utterly lost. They're not bad footballers, but the way that the team's been set up and the, and the tactics or lack of is making these guys look like bums. And they simply aren't. These are 200 million pound footballers. I, I don't understand it. I really don't understand why there is a complete basic lack of, of cohesion. I mean, even against Man United, Enzo's best part of the game was when Caicedo went off and he dropped deeper. I'm not saying that Enzo and Caicedo can't work together. That it's it's not it's early days in that partnership. But I think they'll both be very good players for us, and it will be a good partnership. But right now, there are a lot of teething issues. Enzo had his best moments against United when he was playing deeper, and the reality is, is that what however Poch is utilising him. Whenever Enzo plays well, he's then not utilised in that same way the next game. I don't understand it. Instead of being utilised deep where he's at his best, he's he's not utilised in that way. The next game, you'll see him utilised as a number 10 or something, which just isn't his game whatsoever. Um, um, I, I, just, I just don't understand. I just don't understand. Um, you know, it, it's really, it's really, really frustrating what's going on right now and there's no excuse for us to be not winning games like this you know the midfield is a big problem but again it comes down to basic coaching and Pochettino has done some things right this season you know if you're going to criticize him for what's gone wrong it's only fair that the things that we have done well this season and there are some uh that that he does get some form of credit for that um by the way, guys, it's 84 in the building. Big up to every single one of you. There are only 26 likes. That's really poor conversion rate. So that we're talking Sheffield United levels of conversion here, guys. So make sure you're running those likes up. Let's get this as, let's get this to 50 likes first. We need to get this to 100 likes if we can. So please do smash that thumb button. It's free and it takes seconds and it really helps out more than you could ever imagine. So please do do that, guys. Um, What else have we got going on here? Yes, big up to Zula. Lula Lua, I hope I pronounced that right. Becoming a channel member, greatly appreciated. Thank you for your support, bro. Um, greatly appreciated. As I say, guys, if you want to become a channel member, make sure you hit the link in the description. It's one pound ninety nine a month to support myself and the channel. And you know, as the membership base grows, which hopefully it will, um, then there'll be member only shows and, and extra perks and stuff for members. So please do support me. Hit the link in the description and become a channel member. Um, so, yeah, you know, it, it, it's, it's problematic. And I said it at the time, Enzo and Caicedo have, have cost us a lot of games this season. You know, Caicedo has made a lot of individual errors, but the, the, the makeup of the midfield is, is not good. And 
look, Conor Gallagher is, I, I like Conor Gallagher. It's important to have those types of players in and around the squad and the club. But I'll be honest, I think Pochettino is, Gallagher's done well this season and rightfully, you know, has been in the first team and has kind of deserved to be playing for sure. But I think if, you're, if we're being honest with ourselves and realistic here, you cannot be a serious team if you are playing Conor Gallagher as your number 10. Do you know how crazy that is? You know, we're going to have Nkunku, Mudrick, Chukwameka, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, um, to, to name a few. Cole Palmer can potentially play centrally, although I actually think he's a lot better when he plays on the right. So I don't really want to see him uh, centrally. Um, yeah, it's it's that is the that's the big problem. You cannot be a serious team if Conor Gallagher is your number ten. Gallagher at best should be a rotation option, starting a few games here and there, cup games and whatnot. But he should not be your week in week out starting number ten. I know Nkunku's injured and whatnot, but you know that that just shouldn't be the case um, that we find ourselves in. It really shouldn't be. Um, team to have zero tactical cohesion and fluidity is unforgivable. Um, no, it a- absolutely isn't. I-, I fully agree on that. I fully agree on that. I'm not. I'm not asking for a finished team. I don't think anyone's asking for a finished team. But I think it's fair to say, with a f- with a handful of games left, you would expect at least a basic tactical structure. And, you know, some basic organisation at the back. And we just don't have any of that. Any of that. Uh, these basketball star football potch is playing as terrible directors, rejecting Enrique and Nagelsmann. Well, Nagelsmann just, I think, by all accounts, didn't want to go through the process and just wanted to be handed the job. Um, Enrique, I, I'm still not sure on Enrique, to be perfectly honest. He's not managed a club for a long time. I, I don't know how good he would be. Uh to be perfectly honest, I think right now the only difference between Potter and Pochettino is the fact that we're a few places higher in the table. But ultimately, I think the only thing separating them really is the fact that Potter got Man City away in both in both rounds of sorry in the third round of both cups last season. Otherwise, there isn't that much difference, which is why which is why I, I this is which is why I say to people we we are so vulnerable. We're vulnerable all over the pitch. Vulnerable all over the pitch. Um, we really are. Uh, bang on, midfield hasn't worked, but in their defence, the injuries have meant those available are either overplayed. Uh, this this idea of these guys being overplayed, they absolutely have been overplayed. But this idea that Pochettino pretends um, that they're... Um, this idea that Pochettino pretends that there's no other options is just not true. Like... There are options. You could use Cesare Cassidy. I'm not saying it's the best option, but that is an option. You've seen other teams use academy players, use youngsters. Trust your players. Trust your players. This is a process the club are going through. Then trust those players. You know, you could use Cassidy. You could use, um, what's his face from the, Leo Castledine from the academy. Like there are, there are, there are options that you could use. Um, but you know, he's choosing not to use them and then moaning that there's no options and that these guys have been overplayed. Um, you can't, you can't have it both ways. Um, that's the, that's the reality. That is the reality. Um, I, I don't know right now. I don't, I honestly don't know. Yes. Big up, big up. No, I'm not. I, I, I'm not. No, I'm not. We're, we're, we're mates. But no, we're not. We're not brothers. No. Uh, what else is coming in? Potter didn't have Palmer or Kaiseido. Yeah, no, he absolutely does. He has a better... And this is what I... And this is what, I, this is what I'm saying. Like, when people say they want, they want a new manager and stuff, like, I get it. I understand that. But the grass isn't always greener. No, I'm not. Um, the grass isn't always greener. You know, everyone thought that we'd be miles better after Potter left. The reality is we're not. You know, that is the reality of the situation. We actually aren't better that, than, than when Potter left. We're not really any further along the line. Somehow with this season, right, we've still managed to make it to Wembley twice despite being so poor. Um, that's, that's the reality. Bro, I've already answered this. Stop spamming. <laughs> um, uh uh, well, yeah, we we could. There's there's multiple. Ah, fair enough. Well, I'll I'll, I'll ask him. I'll ask him. Um, I'll, I'll I'll let him know. Um, 
But yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not his brother. No. Um, uh, as soon as Badia Shield came on, you were going to concede. I, I, I don't know. I, I like Badia Shield. Um, bro, I'm going to have to time you out because you keep spamming with the same question, and I've already answered it. So I'm putting you in a five minute timeout um, because it's annoying. Um, yeah. Midfield poor, absolutely poor. There's no, there's no, there's no denying it. Absolutely no denying it whatsoever. Um, I mean, he's saying we were we were tired. I'm I'm not I'm not disputing. Um, I'm not disputing that we were tired. <coughs> but that's not an excuse. That is absolutely not an excuse for what we are seeing. It absolutely is not an excuse for what we're seeing. Um, what do I think about Sari? Well, it's irrelevant. Sari's not coming back. Um, at least we had a defensive structure. Yeah, we had a defensive structure with Potter. Um, look, I, I think f f for me, what's clear is like if you don't make any European football, there's zero grounds for him to stay. If we qualify for Europe or if we win the FA Cup, or that, that, that would mean both. Uh, then I think that probably qualifies as grounds to stay, in my view, whether whether, whether people like it or not. Um, but yeah, if we don't if we don't win the FA Cup and we don't qualify for Europe, then there 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 simply isn't the grounds for him to stay. That for me is is the reality of the situation. But the midfield situation is alarming as well as the as well as the defensive situation. Um, we're we're in a position where, you know, we we just we're just in big trouble. And you look at the games that we've conceded two or more goals in this season, and you wonder why we're dropping so many points, and you wonder why we're struggling to win games. We've conceded two or more goals against West Ham, Arsenal, Brentford twice, City, Newcastle twice, Brighton. Man United twice, Everton, Wolves twice, Luton, Liverpool, Leeds, Leicester, Burnley and Sheffield United. 19 different occasions this season across all competitions, we have conceded two or more goals. That, that is unacceptable. That is unacceptable. And that is not an experience problem. That is not a personnel problem because... We have arguably, we've got a better defensive unit than we had last season. We've lost Koulibaly, Levi Colwell's come back, and we've, and we've got Malagusto at, uh, at right back. Uh, so arguably, you could say the defence is probably better than it was last season. And yet, we're still, we're still in a situation where we're conceding so many goals. We're on course to, to concede a club record amount of goals. Um, that's that's crazy, absolutely crazy, and that comes down to the manager, because there is no defensive structure whatsoever. That's no one else's fault, other than the manager. It, it, it's as simple as that. Uh, that is why we're looking like we're looking. Yes, the players can't be absolved of responsibility because the players on the pitch have been more than good enough to win games comfortably against considerably lesser opposition. This defence is more than good enough to not let in so many goals against relegation sides, against championship sides. This comes down to a lack of accountability, a lack of leadership and a lack of basic coaching in any form of defensive structure. And I think part of the defensive issues is probably part is probably because the midfield's so exposed and it's so easy to bypass and play through. I, I absolutely I absolutely get that. But yeah, we're, we're just in a we're in a major, major problem. There basically is no... I, I would agree on that. Absolutely agree. No, nope, there, there, there wasn't. And by all accounts, they actually gave a reasonable account of themselves. They considered less goals than we did there. Yes, big up, brother. I hope you're doing well. Uh, Possibly to stop playing De Sassi at right back. I, I didn't quite understand De Sassi at right back. I would have thought Chalaba would have made more sense at right back, considering he's a bit more... He's had more experience uh, at right back. Um... 
Pochettino disappointed me at Chelsea. Uh, he's been a disappointment, yeah. The club is a shambles from top to bottom. Gallagher playing left wing. And, yeah, it, no, it absolutely does. I don't know. Uh, I'd like to say we can still come sixth, but the reality is I, I, I don't believe in us that, that we can do that. I think we'll finish between seventh and ninth, but I mean, arguably we could finish, we could finish lower. Um, yeah, it's just not working. Yeah, he's added a bit of output to his game over the last few weeks, but he's not he's not good enough at the end of the day. He's not good enough to be starting for Chelsea every single week. He just isn't. I know he's played well recently, but the reality is he's not good enough, in my opinion. He should stay, but he's not good enough to be a regular starter every single week. Um, I, I, I'm not sure that sort of thing would have come out, I feel. Um, I definitely feel that kind of thing would have come out. Uh, yeah, I, I agree on that. Chalaba has been coached to do a role at right back by Tuchel. Um, yeah, we don't really play a 4-3-3. I don't know if we'll finish mid-table again. I'm not, I'm not, who knows? But yeah, you know, it, it probably is the reality of the situation. But, you know, that is unacceptable to be letting in two different goals on in 19 different ma- two goals or more in 19 matches this season unforgivable absolutely unforgivable um and it doesn't look like getting any better it doesn't look like we're doing any defensive work to try and improve things it doesn't seem to matter which personnel play people were, I'm not blaming Thiago Silva by any accounts for yesterday by the way people have been calling on Silva to be put back in the team he's back in the team yesterday And when he was in the team before, we were still conceding loads of goals. It doesn't seem to matter who is what what quartet of players are playing in in defence. It doesn't seem to make any difference because we are so shit the entire time. That's that's the reality. We're super, super poor. Um, And we're just a complete mess from top to bottom. And the fact that, you know, we've been defensively shit all season... I haven't got any faith that in the last sort of seven or eight games that suddenly we're going to sort out our defensive problems. You know, it's just going to get it's just going to get worse or it's not certainly not going to improve. I mean, he he did a couple of times, but yeah, it it wasn't it wasn't great at all. Yes. Big up, big up. What does want this today? 52 goals conceded with a combination from all competitions. Disgraceful to many fans. Um, I mean, look. (laughs) I don't think people. I don't think people are aware that a win against United was not going to suddenly like make everything all right. Um, we've got we've got a six in in Lavia. He's just not not been fit. That that that's that's the problem. Um, I don't want another season playing one game a week. No, I don't either. Just want to push it back. Yeah, no, I I agree. Well, you'd like to think so. You would like to think so that another manager comes in. If another manager did come in, that you know, they would be able to organise a basic defensive structure and, and, and tighten us up defensively. But I, I, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, yeah, Uga Trick was a defensive midfield player. But again, I don't think we signed him <coughs> to play a part straight away. Um, but yeah, no, he is certainly a, a defensive-minded player, no doubt about it. Um, but yeah, I just feel like right now, it's we're at an interesting point. Uh, as 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 Chelsea, um, do you know do you know what I mean? We're just at an interesting point. Um, I don't oh no, I don't want that. Um, we're, at, we're at an interesting point where you know I, I just think currently, if if we if we just talk about this as a whole, I think if we take it right back to the start and Pochettino kind of coming in. Or whoever it was that was going to come in. I think there's no doubt that whatever manager it was, and obviously it's Pochettino, was placed in a difficult position. I think, first of all and foremost, I think that's a fair thing to say. And I don't think many people would disagree with that. Absolutely placed in a difficult position. I think, what was it, 10 or 11 senior players left last summer? And they were replaced by a bunch of a bunch of players under the age of 25. Um the squad balance is mild, is not is poor, and it hasn't helped in building, you know, good leadership dynamics and such. But if, in fairness to the board, to a slight degree, the young players that they bought in, they weren't just any sort of run of the mill young players. That they 
these players they targeted were, you know, have been the best in class, as it were, in their age group. It's not like you're just targeting a load of average players that are young. The players that you've gone for are believed to be the best for their current age. And you'd like to think, I'm sure the model, the model that they're, they're empl- operating, which I, which is not working right now, in my opinion, that would have absolutely, I refuse to believe they wouldn't have been stupid enough to account for some of these acquisitions being disappointments, but there also would have been account, account, they would also would have accounted for the fact that others would hit the ground running, the likes of your Gustos, your Palmers, etc. Um, and I think it's a model that relies on a lot of players, you know, just volume of players, and eventually, you know, you more, more will hit than, than, than won't hit. Um, but it relies on a lot of players. Um, and, you know, you get breakout seasons such as Gusto and Palmer. And, you know, they were, maybe they were, in a, in a broad sense, they might have been expected by the model as such. I mean, Cole Palmer's put up numbers that are similar to Eden Hazard's numbers in, the, in what was it, the 18-19 season. And, and that would have pushed us towards a top five finish if we had a stable defensive if we had a stable defensive setup. There's no denying that. We'd be pushing towards a top five. We'd be in sixth place right now if we had a stable defensive setup. That is that is facts. That is the reality. Um although we shouldn't be viewing that in isolation, though we've seen enough players at a standard, whilst obviously not world class, but that would get that fits into a team that would get into the top six. You know, you Gallagher's, Enzo's, Caicedo's, Jackson's, Madueke's, etc., Colwell's, Mudricks. These we've seen enough from these guys to suggest that they can get into a team that would finish in sixth place. I don't think anyone's I don't think anyone's disputing that. Um and Pochettino has been very stubborn, you know. He's playing a very, very open 4231. It relies on risky tactics like playing out of the from the from the back, committing a lot of players forward. And leaving gaps. And time and time again, these gaps have been exposed by opposition coaches, particularly in the second half of games. We're we're being exposed because he's playing an overly risky (coughs) 4-2-3-1 formation. And we're being exposed massively in the second half of games. He doesn't have the in-game management ability to shift from his original game plan. And this is why our performances deteriorate so massively in the second half is because his in-game management ability is not there to change on the original game plan. My, in, in my opinion, I think it's much easier to coach a lower risk defensive system that that provides more cover and it and it mitigates your your weaknesses, as it were. Um, it's much easier to coach to coach that in 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 my view. And I think this would perhaps help mask us from individual errors, from a lack of experience, lack of ability, team cohesion in defence. And I think it would also help us to protect our leads a lot more and ensure that games can be more easily closed out rather than seeing our, the constant basketball matches that we have been involved in for for large parts uh, of this season. Um, you know, this squad is capable of a top six set- top six finish in a setup like that. Because of the attacking brilliance of Palmer and Co, you know that will provide goals and assists. You know that require, would would give us enough to win games and get into those European positions. Um, and it's very difficult watching Pochettino fail to change and adapt to his squad to provide the best chance of Europe. I want to I, I want to give a coach time, but it's really difficult to support someone that will not change. And is a, and is providing a tactical approach that fails to get the best out of this team every single week. That is that is the reality of the situation right now. That is the reality. Um, hold on, because I called Palmer City rejects, and he's uh, nothing interesting about. <coughs> but that, that's not that's not going to change. That that isn't going to happen, in my opinion. They absolutely are signing potential. Um, no, we've never done it, you know, and no one's really done it before. So it, it's a it's a huge risk to take. It's a huge gamble to take. And we're going to have to wait and see whether, whether it pays off or not. I, I really don't know if it will. 
I hope because of FFP they don't want. Uh, no, that I, I think that's nonsense. That um, uh, look, it's not looking good right now. That's absolutely clear. If Chelsea sign on number nine, then we should consider converting Jackson. Uh, look, I think Jackson's versatile. Uh, you know, I think he can do a lot of jobs. Um, I mean, look, there's a lot of look, there's, there are some good players at the club, absolutely, but I think it's clear that there are several players that appear not to be up to the standard. That's that's the reality. Um, from what we have heard from them so far, the model is buy a lot of potential individuals, put them on the field. They hope they figure out themselves. Uh, well, it, it, it appears that. No, that's not the standards now, but that's the reality of the situation. When you sign a load of young players with potential, they're not good. this team's not good enough to finish in the Champions League places. <coughs> Excuse me. A team's not good enough to finish in the Champions League places. That's facts. That's not lowering of standards. We are not good enough to finish in the in the Champions League places right now. Where this squad is right now is good enough to finish in sixth place. That's fair. And if we had, a, if we could actually defend, we would be comfortably in sixth place, in my opinion. Even if we'd held on against Burnley and Sheffield United, we'd be sixth, or we'd be a point behind Man United with a game in hand. Like you know. So, something so basic as a basic defensive structure, we would be in sixth place. This team's good enough for that. And it's unfortunately, whether people like it or not, we have to focus on becoming a top six side again before we even think about becoming a top four or title contending side. Um, but yeah, it is, it is massively... Yeah, I mean, I think we've got one more big game performance in us, you know, whatever you think of us this season, in the big games, we've been entertaining, whether it's for the right or wrong reasons on our behalf, our games against the big clubs have provided a lot of entertainment. Hopefully we've got one more, one more all timer in us uh, for the Emirates. Let's, let's hope that can be the case. Guys, 46 likes, come on, run the likes up guys, smash the like button, subscribe if you're new around here, all that good stuff. <laughs> um, let's get this to 50. And beyond, guys. Only four more required. Please smash the likes. And, of course, please subscribe if you are new around here. Heading towards 9,000 subscribers. So make sure you do do that and you subscribe, guys. Come on. It's free and it really helps me out. So please do do it. DOC are selling 100 mil. Yeah, yeah. Brozier. Uh, Chalabar will probably go. Um, uh Martin, Lukaku, um, Lewis Hall's deal will become permanent. We 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 we, we, we can easily do that. Um, do I think we'll beat beat Everton? Uh, I I I I don't know. I, I I honestly don't know. Is 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 the answer to that question? It's uh, it's too difficult to tell. Really, it really is, and that that's the reality of where we are right now. I don't know if we can beat Everton or not. That that's the reality. Uh, Poch isn't charismatic on a touchline. Uh, no, he's not always. Um, and that's something that's been 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 laid at his door. I feel like Stamford Bridge, what's this? Cole Palmer is so good. He goes to Madison's fishbowl party and he gets Madison and Vardy's wife while they have to play. <laughs> fair, fair enough. Um, I feel like Stamford Bridge has got an extremely soft support to start chanting about Poch. I, I don't think that really does anything, to be perfectly honest. Uh, Stuart and Clown Lake can go. They should have kept Marine. Marina wasn't that great either. To be honest. Did a lot of good things, but also did a lot of shit things. Um, bro, you lost to us. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, when did Poch get a red card? I don't remember him getting a red card. But I think, like, you know, you can look at this in a, in a, num in a number of ways. You know, you see players getting frustrated with each other yesterday. Palmer was getting frustrated with the sassy because he wasn't overload. He wasn't getting forward enough to help free up space um, for the attackers. But I think ultimately, you know, where we are right now, guys, is that, you know, Poch, Pochettino asked for experience in January. We, we know this. And yes, you could talk about maybe we didn't have the finances to spend a lot of money in January. But that, that, that might have been the case. But Pochettino, or, or whatever, manager asks for experience in January. So what did the club do? But, and by the way, I'm not saying that Broya 
is is any good or whatever, but he would have been another option there and another body in an area that we are depleted in in the pitch. So what do they do when Pochettino asks for experience? Loans out Brozier. Pochettino asks for a bit more height and steel in midfield. What do they do? They recall Cassade back and give him and give him Cassade. Um, and then the club have basically put all their eggs in the Nkunku basket and say he's going to transform the season to get you the goals. He then gets injured the next week. And you think that a top class, that top class managers are coming to us in this mess? Absolutely not. Um, look, the owners, in some people's opinion, will rightly stay with Poch potentially. But whoever it is, they need to bloody well back him and get some leadership in the summer. No one wants to see another influx of kids no one has heard of again. They simply do not want that. Um, do not want that. You know, I, I didn't mind about Broya going, but it means that Jackson's got zero competition. And it's been a number of games this season where, you know, in the last sort of 15, 20 minutes or half an hour or whatever, we could have done with an alternative option for Jackson just to try and switch things up. That that's the reality. We that that is what we could have done with is 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 kind of those those sorts of different options. Um and, and we don't have them. And and I look at it and what's strange is that we play much better against the top clubs and we struggle against low blocks. That that's been a problem for uh a number that's been a problem for a number of number of years. Um I look at it and Let's be real. Any smart, this is just this is my opinion, but any smart manager will absolutely want no part of Chelsea, given you will not be given the tools to succeed, and then you'll be held responsible for the failings of those that are above you. That that's that's the reality. No one's gonna want to come here when you don't get given the tools you need to succeed, <coughs> and then you'll lose your job and be the fool guy for the failings of inept sporting directors and ownership above you. That that That's the reality, guys. That's the reality. Yes, maybe maybe someone like a Roberto De Zerbi, for example, might come. You know, ego might come into it for him, potentially. Um, you know, given it would be maybe the biggest club he's potentially likely to get. But most of us should look at the mess we've been in since the summer of 2022, and wonder what most managers will do, and they'll wonder at what cost is it to his rep to their reputation versus the benefit that they're likely to get. And let's be real, Chelsea right now and the current guys and the current situation they're in, to managers, it's going to be a bigger damage to their reputation than they are to get a bigger benefit. Um, and 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 that that that's what that's where I think that's where I think we're at right now, is that. You know, you can call for you can call for new managers, fine, but let's be totally real. Given that these sporting directors are more than likely to stay, the track record that they've had so far of appointing Graham Potter and Graham Potter and uh, and, and Pochettino, if Pochettino was after a thorough and ex an extensive process, can we really trust these guys to get the next one right? There's every chance that if Pochettino goes and these sporting directors pick someone else, things could actually get worse. That's the worrying thing right now. There's every chance that things could get worse. You know, th things aren't going to suddenly magically get better. A new manager is not going to suddenly mean that we're going to become a top four side. That that just isn't the case, guys. Absolutely is not the case. Um, but, I mean, I, I just don't really understand what we're, what we're doing at the moment. I just don't get what we're doing right now. Um, I, I don't understand it. I, I really don't. Um, we're, we're having massive, massive problems. Um, massive, massive problems. I mean, we're just showing no... No, we're just showing no accountability. You know, no accountability is just silence and inaction. And it, that just kind of reflects acceptance that this is all fine. And, um, and oh, I just don't know. I just really don't know. 
I mean, the fact that we created 0.37 XG against bottom of the league, and that's the lowest team, it's the lowest by any team in the league against them this season. Do you know how criminal that is? How absolutely criminal that is that we have done that shit. <coughs> absolutely shocking. And uh, I've got some Sheffield United fans in the chat. Fair enough. Uh, th thoroughly deserved. Can't even argue against it. Cannot even argue against it. Amaroon's not coming. Um, he he's going to be the Liverpool next manager. I think that's almost certain. The Zerbi will probably have better choices than us, or he might stay at Brighton. Um, to, look, for me, I'm grateful for what Tuchel done. He is not the answer. Look at the absolute shit show he's doing at Bayern Munich. Tuchel's rep has taken a big dent from his Bayern Munich, uh, from this spell at Bayern Munich. And I don't think he'll be in consideration for that many big jobs this summer, given how his spell at Bayern's gone. Um, I, I, I really think that's, I really do believe that's the case. Um, but, it, this is not changing. It is not changing. What Chelsea have tried to do over the last two years of the new ownership is something that has never, ever delivered consistent high-level success, guys. It's an acquisition and development of, you know, a, a broad and different, so a broad and diverse set of, of young talent and has typically been the preserve of teams that are not Champions League contenders the likes of your Brightons and whatnot. You know, no team that is a serious team wanting to be a Champions League contender, wanting to be a Premier League title-winning contender has, has gone down this route before. No one's done it. And for the last two years, we have tried to do it and we are failing spectacularly at this point in time in doing it. That, that's the reality. Uh, that's the reality of, of the situation, guys. It's as simple as that in my view. Um, you know, half of this squad were personally recruited by people above the manager. And the only thing that will have any manager, will have, the only thing that happens to any manager that goes to war with those above him is that they'll just go, they'll just run crying and we'll have a new manager with the same problem. That's the collaborative process here that we are talking about. That is the collaborative process. Um, you know that 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 that's that that's the problem right now. You know we don't have a winning environment here. We simply don't have a winning environment. Um, you know, people can talk about a new manager bounce, but they're ignoring the fact that the culture is the issue at Chelsea. If a new manager bounce works more often than not, why did we have two coaches fail when we sacked them last season? Um, you know, what legitimate changes are, are, are going to be made? Whether you agree or not, the players clearly like Pochettino. The flaws you have in the squad are going to remain the same, whether it's Pochettino or someone else in charge. Maybe, I don't know, maybe you get someone who plays players that fans might prefer more than they don't. But you can't just inject some experience into this group overnight, you know? Um, look, maybe if they like him this much, a young squad, you could, you know, you could make the point that, you know, it points to them being in a comfort zone. Are they being challenged as much as possible in the comfort zone? Maybe, maybe they're not. I mean, a change of manager, would it mean taking them out of the comfort zone? Quite possibly. Um, I think the contracts is, is another thing, potentially. A lot of these players are tied down until 2030. And when the manager gets two years plus an option of a third, with an assessment after 12 months, whether you, whether you like it or not, that leads into a position of being comfortable and not pushing yourselves. Um, but I would like to think that players want to succeed and they want to prove themselves, but there is a reality that those contracts are not really that incentivized. Um, they're very long contracts and they're basically guaranteeing them wealth for life already at such a young age. It's not the same level of incentive as shorter term contracts. You know, I think there's a lack of motivation here. There's a manager right now at the club who's effectively on a 12 month rolling contract, trying to get the best out of players that categorically know they're going to outlast him and, and, and probably the next manager as well, regardless of their level of performance. That 
that on all accounts is not a winning environment. That is not a winning environment, guys. Um, it, re it really isn't. It's not a winning environment right now. We we're not going to get a top-level manager. We're not going to get a top-level manager. Uh, yes, big up. We need a captain, someone that will bollock the team, get, G them up, sort out the pansies from arguing over who to... So, look, look. Yes, big up, mate. You're not wrong. That's why the next manager is so important. It has to be a tempo-controlling manager. That's the squad we've built. The two midfields... I, I just don't know... Anyone that comes in, in my opinion, that's realistic is going to would would it would would represent more of a risk than what what it was appointing Pochettino. Whoever comes in next is going to be a gamble. It's going to be a gamble because of the level of managers that we are competing with. That that's the reality. That is the reality of the situation. I don't know. Look, Xavi's done well at Barcelona, but you know Barcelona is a, a unique is a unique circumstance. He's worked well with young players. They produced some amazing players at, at, at La, La Masia. Um, look, going from Barcelona to Chelsea is a massive step up. La Liga to the Premier League, you know, this, this is, these are big step ups, guys. Um, I just don't know if, if people are quite aware of how big it is. Um, but yeah, guys, 81 in the building. Keep smashing the like button. We're on 57. Let's try and get this towards 100. Come on, guys. No excuses not to. Absolutely no excuses not to. Um, so please, please, please keep smashing the like button. Let's get it up. Smash the subscribe button as well. Um, if you guys don't like the video, uh, I'm, I'm not doing my... Well, we don't have a winning culture. Um, look, I, I absolutely agree. The manager plays a part in that, for sure. Um, I, I'm, I'm not absolving Potch of blame, but the culture in any business, the culture is set from the very top and it trickles down. And right now, there is not a winning culture being set at the top. So how can you expect there to be a winning culture on the pitch when all that's trickling through the, the club from top to bottom is anything but a winning culture? Um, what else is going on? Um, guys, there's so much coming in. I can't read it all. Uh, this is true, but the gamble has to fit the squad being built. A positional coach that can... May, may, maybe, maybe. But it, it it's just difficult, isn't it? It's tough. Um, Look, uh, uh, for what it's worth, I think eventually this will come good. But I, I, I cannot say how long this is going to take. Uh, no no one knows. No one knows how long it's going to take. But I think the, the most important, the most critical thing and the most important thing is, is the fact that this summer is absolutely massive. You know, this is the fourth window of the four window projects we've been or the four window cycle that, that we've been told about and whoever we sign this summer we're going to find a lot out about the direction this club is heading in this summer is so so important on so on so many levels um i mean that i would also say that there is an amazing subset of chelsea fans who actually genuinely believe that the majority of this squad are unbelievable players and the manager, yet again, is the sole issue. It absolutely shocks me. It shocks me. This is like the third or fourth different manager this has happened to. How many stages of this is it going to take for people to realise it's simply a deep-rooted cultural issue? Um, it, it, it really is. But for whatever reason, people just do not realise that. Do not realise that. My biggest concern with the club right now, is that the hierarchy don't think their approach is flawed ahead of what is a crucial summer. And more than likely, guys, we are just going to plough ahead with the same under-23 plan. That That is my biggest concern right now, that they're not going to address the problems. Um, and it's going to be... And, 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 that's, and that's what it's going to be. We're just not going to assess the problems and we're just going to go ahead with our same fucking plan of just going down the under-23s route. This, this summer does not need a squad overhaul or a turnover of players, as bad as, thing, as bad as things might look. The focus for me this summer absolutely has to be on adding players in their prime and maturity and leadership to this group. 
And if that means having to offer higher wages and slightly sh and, and, and shorter term deals, then so be it. This is fucking elite football, elite football. If the plan is to just keep doing the same strategy, I'd rather us not spend anything this summer. I'd rather bring back players that we've got on loan and then invest in what we've already invested in. Because if we're just going to go down the same route again, I'd legitimately rather we didn't spend a single penny this summer. I, I really would. Really, really would. Um, and that, that for me, is, 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 is the reality of that situation. I'd rather we spend nothing if we're just going to sign a load of young kids again. That, that for me, it, that's, that's where I'm at on this. Um, I'd rather we didn't spend anything. And people might, you know, you guys might, might disagree with me, but if we're just going to do the same thing that we've been doing, then I would really think it's better to not, to not spend any money this summer. That, that's my thoughts. Um, players in the squad that need selling are probably Gallagher, Sterling, Chill. We're not going to sell both of them. One of, I think, Carrera will probably go. I actually think he's all right. Um, Gallagher will probably end up leaving. Sterling won't leave because no one's going to pay him the ridiculous wages that that we're paying him. Well, I think Sterling's got one more season, then he'll have two years left on his contract at the end of next season. I highly doubt he'd be offered a new deal. So they will look to 100% sell him. Um, and, you know, people need to understand that, you know, players in their prime and adding maturity and leadership doesn't mean you're asking for a bunch of players in their fucking 30s. You're asking for players who are going to, you know, help challenge the younger players, guide them and offer the manager more of a balanced squad and some leadership, which is desperately, desperately needed. Um, do, do you know what I mean? Like, why, you know, Medawake was speaking yesterday on, on the mood in the dressing room. And he said, and, and, and he said, uh, what, what did he say? Let me find it now. Um, he said, Nani Medawake on the dressing room mood. Silent, to be honest. Of course we should have won the game. The fashion we lost it in is bad. The way we drop points sometimes, it was in the palm of our hands. Yes, it fucking was in the palm of our hands. Do you know what's mad is that why is the dressing room silent? Why isn't anyone angry? You've literally just failed to beat the, the single worst team in the league. And as I said earlier, coaches are set from above. And I don't mean the coach. Players keep getting told all of this is all right and they just need time. So where's the pressure? Where's the accountability? There isn't any. Under Roman, players felt pressure because they knew the ownership would not tolerate anything other than winning in the early years. And two things would happen. The, either the coach or they would be upgraded on sooner rather than later. There's not that pressure. There's not that fear factor. These guys are just playing and then things will come good. Where, where is everything? Where is all this stuff? It's, it's just not there. I think he probably will be. And part of me would think that's the right thing to do. And then another part of me would think, no, that absolutely isn't the right thing to do. It's a, it's a, it's a tricky situation. It, it, it really is. Um, the sporting, the sporting directors aren't, aren't, aren't good enough. They're absolutely not. Um, because we've got a bunch of team players that are young and that's what you're going to get inconsistencies from these players simple as that this man Potter is one of the worst managers i've seen i wouldn't say he's one of the worst but he's certainly having a difficult time of things um yep that's going to be great fun as well uh look, actually for what it's worth i think pochettino is a good manager he's just it's just it's just not working for him right now at chelsea it really isn't but he's at fault for a lot of things but there's also a lot of things that aren't his fault um you know, this is an app. I keep banging up. This summer is so, so important. So important. And if they just sign a load of kids again, they're clearly not getting the message. And that's going to be really, really concerning. Really concerning. Um, you know, I, I, look, I, I, I don't think silence means that or that players don't care. I genuinely think that a lot of this squad do care. But ultimately, like anyone in any working environment, you are a byproduct of the environment in which you're in. And right now, at Chelsea, there is an environment which lacks leadership, lacks clarity, and lacks a serious level of accountability, guys. There doesn't seem to it doesn't seem that healthy as well that 
a large number of these signings feel like they are very personal signings from sporting directors that, you know, were based off previous relationships at other clubs rather than the way that things should be done in that, yes, X player fits Chelsea, X player fits the way that we want to play, X player fits this mould. They need these players to work, these sporting directors, because they're personally connected to them and their reputations. That is that is the reality. I haven't, I haven't once said that I love Poch, but to, 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 for people that think everything's going to be fine once he changes, it, when, it, when he eventually goes, he's, he's got their head in the clouds. Absolute head in the clouds. Um, that's from a number of years ago, and I haven't seen the full context in which it's in. Um, clearly, that part of it does not look great. No denying it. Um, yeah, but again, we Reese James is not going to solve all, all the issues we've got at, at this point in time. Guys, keep smashing the like button. We're on 64 likes. Um, there's 81 in the building still. Run up those likes, guys. Let's get us to 70 likes, 80 likes if we can. I know you can do it, guys. So please keep smashing the like button and please keep subscribing. Um, we should, uh, Reese is a defensive midfield player. I'm not sure about that. No, I wouldn't say, look, it, it was a fair result. You know, no, you can't say that and say that we were hard done by for getting a draw. We absolutely won. He's but probably maybe too honest for his own good, but you know that 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 that's the reality. That's the reality. You know that that is the that's the reality. You know, people calling for the manager to be sacked. Right, I I, I understand it. I hear it. But this would be the third manager that this di these directors would would have hired, and then will subsequently fire. Do they get it right right the fourth time? Arguably not on on evidence. How much slack do they get cut for gutting a squad for back-to-back mid-table finishes and three managers later? Guys, in any other field, if someone spent more than they should have done, failed to set or achieve any goals, and then fired the three associates, then they would also be fired as well. There's no accountability at this football club, and that stems from the very top in that boardroom. That is the reality. That is the reality. It would more, it would make if you're going to sack anyone, it would make more sense to sack the new, to sack the directors first, get new directors who then pick the next manager. These guys have clearly shown that they are not fit for purpose. And the fact that make, sacking the sporting directors makes the most sense is the exact reason why it will 100% not happen. Not happen. Um, you know? And, you know, Pochettino is saying that we, sh we struggle to compete in these games. And we struggle to compete against these type of teams. We struggle to compete against the worst team in the league. Maybe it's time we all just packed up and we all went home. What are we doing? What are we doing? Um, no, I I'm not talking about... I'm talking about in general. He's not a bad manager. But there are a number of fundamental basics that he is completely missing. And that he is showing a complete willingness to not adapt to not adapt to uh, and and that is a major problem i mean joe shields has done a good job i think um look again despite our best efforts we are still in with a shout of getting some form of european football are we going to do that i don't know that is the answer the only reason i'm giving the some slack is because the managerial options from last year were horrid um but, but, but there are they're not exactly any better this year this summer realistic options are no better. You're looking at people like Arnie Slot. You're looking at maybe a Hansi Flick, potentially. You're looking at, like, there's there's not there's not good options. Not good options available. Um, and that is the reality of the situation. It's as simple as that. Um, uh, I will bring the call-in show back. Uh, I, I, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll do one this week. Um, this week. Maybe, let me have a think. Maybe Wednesday? Potentially could do it Wednesday. Um, yeah, maybe Wednesday. No, I, I absolutely wouldn't. I absolutely wouldn't do any better. But th 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 that's not the point. It's not my job to do better. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's all it's also strange as well that. Can anyone explain to me what this genius project is? And why as fans that we should just sit and accept all of this to please some sporting directors who are very inept and are very, very out of place. 
You know, United, look, I look at it. United was great. It was a good moment, but that's all it was. And right, and right now, this is what Chelsea actually are and, how, and what we're meant to be at this point in time. Based on these self-assured quotes, et cetera, that we're giving to favourable media outlets, this ownership likes to speak to. And there's no denying it, it's an absolute disgrace the way that this club has been run right now. Absolute disgrace. Um, you know, and, you know, how is it entitled to ask any questions when you fail to beat the bottom two teams in the league is, is absolutely beyond me. Absolutely beyond me. Um, you know, you get the fan advisory board coming out saying that, you know, it was too far to call us, to, to, you know, to, to say, to say that Chelsea supporters just were saying that we're becoming a laughing stock. What on earth are they going on about? We haven't managed to beat the two shittest teams in the league. And you're saying it was, was a step too far to, to label the club a laughing stock. I mean, what is going on? What is going on? What is going on? Um, I, I, I don't have the answer to these questions, guys. I do not have the answers to these questions. Uh, what are you saying in the chat? Um Owners put scouts in the director's seats. It's not director's faults, but owners. Uh, well, look, I, I, it, it all stems from the top. I, I, I don't know. Uh, may, may, maybe it is. Maybe it is. I mean, look, don't get me wrong. We all want to be in a situation where we discover players before someone else does, and then, they, and then we end up paying 70, 80, 90 million pounds for them. I absolutely get that. But, you know... I understand that. Trust me, that sort of shit does not work. It doesn't work, and you get way less people turning up than than that uh, than than say they're going to go. It is absolutely unacceptable. Um, it absolutely is 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 unacceptable. Um, I just this club is just in a is just in a in a, in a huge mess, huge huge mess. Um, huge mess and it does stem from the top it's the culture and there's a culture of zero accountability right now um that 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 is ultimately where we're at and until the culture at the club change it doesn't actually matter who the players are and it doesn't matter who the manager is that's the reality if the culture stays the way it is then not not a lot is going to change if anything whatsoever um you know, you play stupid games, you win stupid prizes. That is what we're doing right now. Playing stupid games, and we are absolutely winning stupid prizes. Um that that that's 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 what's going on. Winning stupid prizes right now. Um I, I just don't know. It's just yeah, it's just it's just staggering, isn't it? it really is. Really, really is. And to sum it up, uh, this is the worst. I just found this now. This is the worst attacking performance by any team against Sheffield United since Bristol City in April last year. They went on to finish 14th in the championship. That is the level of company we are keeping right now with that attacking display yesterday. We had three shots in the Sheffield United box yesterday. One of those was from a corner. Absolutely diabolical level of coaching. Absolutely diabolical level of coaching. And that is the and that is the and that is the reality of the situation, guys. It was a it was diabolical. Absolutely diabolical. And it's a long road back. We will get back, guys. I, I'm I'm pretty confident we'll get back, but I, I don't know. I don't know how long it's gonna it's gonna take. I don't know how long it's gonna take. Pochettino saying it's a three to five year process. We've already wasted two years. So fuck knows how much longer it's gonna take. We we are we are in problems. Uh, sorry, things are equalizing themselves. You had good twenty years thanks to Roma, but now you're back where Chelsea always were. We we we, we were winning trophies in the in the nineties. Um, you know. It, we we will we will we'll, we'll get back to the top. I, I I do actually think I do feel confident in that. But in the short to medium term, we are absolutely in a situation where where we're struggling. Absolutely, 
Um, yeah, I mean, if only I could do that. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're poor right now. Why Gilgrim does not start a left back? Uh, I, I don't know. I, and this is, what, this is what I've said time and time again. A lot, directors and owners, a lot to blame for. But anything that's happening on the pitch in terms of setup and tactics, that's on one person and one person only. And that's the manager. And it absolutely, on all levels, has not been good enough. But it's all, all of this stems from the top. That That's the basic reality, is that it all stems from the top, guys. Um, you know, and, and until that changes, we are we're going to be struggling. We are going to be struggling. Oh, I, 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 I can confirm that. <coughs> Excuse me. I can confirm that that absolutely isn't the case. Um, but yeah, I, I, like you look at it now, you know, the, the players have got a couple of days off. I think we're back back in training on Wednesday. Um, whatever. Uh, we've got Everton next. It's just a catalogue of errors and how exactly not to not to run a football club at this point in time. I get it, you know, this was never going to be a smooth transition. It was never going to be a smooth transition, but they made too many changes too quickly. They've torn out a winning culture and replaced it with a culture that had, that doesn't demand an ounce of accountability from anyone. You've got players that are in comfortable positions knowing that they're going to outlast managers. Um, and we've created anything but a winning environment. It couldn't be it couldn't be less of a winning environment at Chelsea right now. Um and that's a that's a sad thing to see. It is a sad thing to see that, you know, we were a top four team before Roman and winning trophies. No, we, we were we still were we still were, you know, in, in the hunt and winning trophies. We weren't some sort people seem to think that before Roman we were some sort of irrelevant mid table team. We won European trophies, we won domestic cups. Like we weren't some sort of irrelevant team. That that that, that is just not true. Um, it is. It absolutely is. It's it's really tough. And do you know what? I think there'll be more dark moments in the remainder of this season, and there are bound to be a fair few next season as well. That's the reality, people. That is the reality of the situation that we are going to find ourselves in. Um. Well, multiple reasons. One, there's no defensive structure. Two, Pochettino's in-game management and, and refusal to adjust tactically in a game is seeing us get picked off. Those, for me, are the two main reasons as to why as to why that stuff's happening. It is, it's not hard to see, in my view. It really isn't that hard to, to see and that hard to notice. Um, but yeah, it is what it is, guys. It is what it is. Um, and that is the, and that is the reality of the situation that that we do indeed find ourselves in. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's it's pretty tough right now. It is pretty tough, guys. No, no, no escaping that fact. Um. Yep, last time we kept a clean sheet in uh no, it's not not in the league, it's away from home. The last time we uh kept a clean sheet away from home was the October game against Fulham at Craven Cottage. Since then, we've not kept a single clean sheet at home. That's horrendous. Absolutely uh possibly, although I think he probably turned that one down. Everton docked two points. Yeah, they'll get those two points back when they play us more than likely. Um I don't know. I think I think he might do. Um I don't think he's a bad tactical coach, but he's just shown no willingness to adapt his in-game management whatsoever. And that, for me, is the number one reason as to why we've uh, why we've been so poor in the second half games. Um, yes, big up, Billy. Appreciate it, bro. Appreciate it. Um, yes, hope you're doing well, mate. Uh, I'm already worried. Uh, I'm, I'm not even thinking about next season right now. Let's just get to... Let's just get through this one, and and then and then we can think about next season, uh, when when next season comes around. Um, but right now, I'm not thinking about that. Absolutely not thinking about that. But it's just a mess from top to bottom. 
That's that's the reality. Simple as that. It is a mess from top to bottom, guys. Um, so yeah. Um yeah, that, that that's that's the problem. That is the problem. Um but yeah, we'll have to wait and see what happens. At least there's no game. Um that 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 that's the most that's the most important thing. Um so yeah. Guys, I think we're going to round this one out here now. Not too much more to add. Um, big up to everyone that's locked in today. It's been greatly appreciated. Please keep smashing that like button on the way out. Um, you know, we're on 75 likes. Let's get this as close to 100 likes as we can. So every single one of you that's not smashed that like button, smash that like button on the way out. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here. Big up to everyone that's tuned in. Um, I'll be back tomorrow. I've got a video dropping tomorrow uh, about Chelsea's hunt for a new striker and who the best options would be uh collabed on that one so you have to wait and see who it's with but yeah that'll drop tomorrow if there's enough news i'll be back i'll be back live but guys please do smash the like button on your way out please subscribe to the channel as well let's bump these likes up let's bump these subscribers up and yeah enjoy the rest of your evening guys uh things will get better but they might get worse before they do get better so yeah enjoy the rest of your evening as always up the shelves i'll catch you guys again soon peace out and see you